Why wouldn't I start recording as soon as a rocket is in the air? So this is an automated rocket. I'm touching none of the controls, except for selecting prograde right now because the rocket has begun its gravity turn as instructed. You'll notice in the bottom left corner that the uh, yaw, roll, and pitch are all going a bit crazy, but they're actually having zero effect because all of the reaction wheels and control, uh, there's only one control surface on the bottom there that's being manually deployed. And uh, there's one engine with gimbal authority in the center that is also uh, having its gimbal disabled during this portion of the flight. So from 32 seconds to 80 something seconds, if I remember correctly, uh, this is the configuration that it'll be in completely automated. Then it will return to following prograde because I have selected prograde. Unfortunately, there's no way to do that with the Cal 1000, so I'm not doing that. I just got a notification because I'm a dumbass and forgot to turn that off. And um, right now we're just testing to make sure that it continues to that point correctly. And then after that, right after the first stage burnout, it should trigger the parachutes, trigger the air brakes, trigger stage separation, activate the second engine, and slowly throttle it up over the course of 10 seconds. And everything I just mentioned will happen right after two minutes and eight seconds on the mission clock. So if you look in the top left, you'll see we're getting fairly close to that. And then as soon as that's done, uh, there's no more automation currently programmed, and I need to make sure that I see exactly how long this next burn should go on for, as well as um, when to detach the fairings. So you can see we've had separation. We're slowly throttling up, and this throttle up will not be finished until we get to about 220. It's actually using the thrust, there we go, it's actually using the thrust limiter in order to do that, and I should have detached the fairing already. Um, I didn't catch the exact moment to do that, but that's something I'll need to program in. Um, basically, as soon as we get to 45 kilometers, pretty much pretty quickly after stage separation. And then the other thing I need to figure out is exactly when to cut the throttle, which, oops, I just did it early, I shouldn't have. And again, I have notifications going off, and I'm sorry about that. I'll fix that in just a minute. But we're aiming for an apoapsis of about 120 kilometers. Actually, I think I'll make it uh, 175, 150, something like that. I think 150 because we have a steeper ascent profile than my previous missions. Fact, I bet if I stopped it right now, 125 is my, uh, my approach vector. Let's see how this goes. Because basically at this point, this stage needs to come down. Oh, because this is going up still, so I don't think that's actually possible, and I'm too far away from the main rocket now. So yeah, I definitely need to redo this. Holy shit! Is that y'all talking? What? Liberty Rough Puffs. Okay, for the launch controller, is this the fairing? Yes. We're gonna need to add deploying the fairing to the track. And I think about two, about full throttle was when it needs to go off. That was two, no, that's 140. 140. So we'll go for, uh, actually, you know what? We'll go for 40. Now we'll make it 145. And we'll see how that goes. And then the cutoff, let's make the cutoff uh, 200. And then if that's wrong, then, you know, whatever. Yeah, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna change the throttle independent. Or actually, maybe I can change the throttle independently. The it's set to the main throttle, but it might allow me to turn down the throttle in a way that actually correctly does things. So we'll tr we'll try this. I'm not expecting it to work, but we'll give it a try. Unfortunately, due to limitations in KSP, I am rather limited in my ability to automate a rocket. But things are going surprisingly well despite that limitation. I think I'm going to try to make a space shuttle with the same level of automation. Okay, gravity turn is complete. Main stage burnout should be at 2 minutes 8 seconds. And decoupling, as intended. Throttling up. Right now is when the stage fairing should have, the fairing should have separated, so that was at about 2.14 or so. There we go, separated late, but that's okay. And then I believe the main engine cutoff is set for 300 seconds exactly, which will be, gosh, brain cannot do the math right now, but I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna see if it actually works. 
Although, let's go ahead and take a look at the Cal controller here. Did I say 300 seconds? I think I meant 200. Let's see. Can I please take a look at that number? 200 seconds is when I set it to throttle off. Now, I'm not sure if that'll actually change our main throttle or just the engine, or if it'll do nothing because we haven't configured the engine to use a separate throttle from the main throttle. Mm, excuse me. So we'll see. It'll either function right now or it won't. Looks like it did not. Although it does look like if it had functioned, that would be exactly where I want it to trigger. So the guess of 200 seconds seems to be about right. Okay, I've reconfigured that and this needed to go at about 214, so that'll be 12 plus, that'll be 13 or? Oh, I've made a critical error. Lol. Oh, that's a, that's an interesting screen to pause on. That's some art right there. Here, let me get my, yeah, got my cursor out of the way, just long enough I can take a screenshot out of that. <laughs> so the critical error, the eagle-eyed among you will have noticed, is that I left the end stage at 100%, so it would have immediately started crawling back up, up after cutting. Uh, what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to leave that alone, and unfortunately it means you'll have to have the added manual step of cutting your throttle and increasing your thrust limiter, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So at this point we should be pretty much established. I did enable SAS a little later than I should have since I enabled it after liftoff. And the biggest complication with this whole rocket design, or the, the reason it is so complicated, is because the first stage is recoverable. Automating a rocket, not too difficult. Automating a rocket that also is recoverable, a little bit more difficult. The uh, automation is entirely on the second stage, because I realized that it would be more useful to have a single Cal 1000 controller that is on the second stage. Even though the second stage is discarded, um, there would be no point in putting another one on the first stage. The first stage recovers using parachutes, we have a battery, we have a, uh, what do you call it, remote guidance unit, and an RTG, so that it has power, because uh, it needs it just, it, it lives just long enough to need it. It might be actually pretty reasonable to get rid of that, but oh well, I'm not worried about it. And of course we have the air brakes at the top to uh, make sure that it re-enters engine first and slows down enough for the parachutes to deploy, and then the first stage will end up in the ocean uh, not terribly far away. I did make a video on this design previously. That was the non-automated version. That was a version where you had to control everything manually. It did have an action group that controlled the air brakes deploying and the parachutes activating and some of the staging stuff, but I realized It'd be really neat if I could take that same design and convert it to an automated system, and that's what we have here, and I almost forgot to reset that to prograde. Fortunately, I did just in time before it started trying to do it on its own. Again, burnout right at 208, and separation occurs right after that, as well as an immediate, very gentle throttle up, and I think the fairings actually deployed a little earlier than they should that time, but not that much. Um, I think it's... I think I'll go ahead and push those back by about five seconds, four or five seconds, just to give it a little more time to handle itself. And right now we're waiting for this to shut itself down by setting the thrust limiter all the way down, at which point I will cut the throttle to zero, put the thrust limiter back up, although I imagine the automation will push it back down even if I do that. So actually I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna cut the throttle and then uh, switch to the other vessel to make sure that it lands correctly, and then go from there. Its landing point should be somewhere in the ocean here, not not quite to the land on the other side, but pretty close to that. Like I said, right now we're just waiting for main engine cutoff, which should be coming up within a couple seconds here. Maybe it's 320, I forget the exact conversion between seconds and minutes and seconds, but there it is, fully cut off. I've cut the throttle, now we go to the tracking station to switch to the other part. And the way that you will know it's the correct one is this one has a higher trajectory and is... Oh wait, no, sorry, that's the wrong one. Yeah, the, the shorter time span one is the one that we need to fly down. And this whole launch trajectory is not the best, but it is necessary in order to have this correctly land itself. 
and have enough time to go back and finish flying the other one into orbit. It looks like our trajectory is a lot steeper than I used to use these that when I test them before. In fact, you can see that's the last one that I manually flew down there. So I did a uh, test flight completely manually to make sure things were working as intended, although it looks like our trajectory is going to bring us fairly close to our previous landing site, so the difference in trajectory hasn't changed things that much. That over there is, a, is an aircraft, actually. I'm going to turn down our simulation speed a little bit. Or time warp. And I forgot to make this change, but I wanted to make the parachutes open at 650 instead of 800, because that gives us a little bit more time by making the landing a little bit quicker. So as you can see, we still stop about 400 meters before the ocean surface, so I could actually lower that even further. I like having a little bit of a safety buffer there. Let's see. Oh, I only opened one of those new. Okay. Well, I'll have to change that in the VAB to see how that goes. Anyhow, I'm going to time warp a little bit quicker right now so we can just get down. And there you go, we have a gentle touchdown. Everything survives intact. Give it a moment to fall over. And then as soon as the surface speed stays at zero consistently after dropping, now we are safe to go back to the tracking center. And from there we can finish the orbital insertion, which it looks like we're right at apoapsis. We're at least very close to it. So uh, this maneuver might have to be very quickly. So, make sure you're on your toes. Oh, that's... okay. Thanks, that's the wrong thing. Yeah, we're past apoapsis, so this insertion is not going to be great. Okay, prograde, and we need to make sure that the engine has full thrust. Come on. Uh, wait, what? Is the automation blocking me from engaging it? Yeah, it's still going through its sequence, so let's uh, stop it, put it at full, let's get you all the way up, full thrust, I'm going to go to stability assist and get above the horizon, we are at about a 174 on our apoapsis, so I know what changes to make, but for right this second, can we pull out of this dive? Probably, we do have plenty of... Uh, fuel on board. That is one of the design advantages of this. Uh, because I'm using the Wolfhound engine, we get quite a bit of capability out of that. So we are in an orbit. It's a very lopsided orbit, but it's an orbit. That's good enough for me right now for this test, because I'm not bringing that back yet. Nice! Even when I disable my notifications, notifications still happen! You already cut. Let's change that to 137. We want to change our cutoff. Okay, we want our whole thing to drop down to 2, 2, 1, which should be the last point on this graph. Oh no, that seems to have broken something. Oh, is there any way to... No, of course there isn't, but I can just reopen it. Of course, yeah, because the other one exists, I can't move that one. That's such a stupid design. Why did that break it? Why did that break it? Yeah, it it changed the points. It literally says that it won't change the points, but it does. <sighs> this is, like, I love KSP, but this is the kind of thing that is why I hate KSP. Because it's like, you, you set things up a certain way, and then you just decide, actually, what if it didn't work the way we say it does? Maybe if I could, uh, two, two, two. No, yeah, that doesn't change anything, okay. What happens, let's say, 224? So that way it's... Yeah, see, none of this should have moved, but it does. Like, is it because the, the tangents don't change? Like, why why did that one get moved all the way back, but this one stays here? Like, and, and not only... But it's not even staying here, it's just going into almost the right spot, but not at all? And then just some point just got deleted? Like, one of the points was just deleted. Just straight up delete it. And then this Airstream, it's supposed to be at 137. Okay, that's still at 137, but nothing else is. That's so annoying. So I have to guess with the time scale, and if I get the time scale wrong, I just have to live with it being wrong. 
I can't change it back because if I change it back, it breaks. All right, so I'm gonna add another point here that's gonna be 230 or so. And this point will be, uh, yeah, 230. And then I'm going to leave that there. And then I'm gonna add another point at 231, 231. And this one will be 100. We'll have regular sharp points there. We'll have sharp points there. And that one will also be 100. And this is so that you don't have to turn off the automation, but it's very important that you remember to cut the throttle. Here's a view we normally don't get because it always faces the camera the other direction. That'd actually be a pretty neat feature if it just randomly decided which angle to face the camera at, like just along the horizon like normal, but just it could be facing the ocean or it could be facing the whole KSC or the mountains or I don't know, this bay. So that's the default, Never mind. Okay, set to prograde because it has started the gravity turn. This does a remarkably good job holding on 90 degrees despite not really being well programmed to do that. Just the weird roll deviation causes it to get pretty close. Oh well, one can always make corrections in orbit. Anyhow, we're coming up on main stage. Main engine cutoff, Miko. 